Hello everyone, uh, welcome back. As I told you earlier, my name is Josephine De Silva and I will be teaching you GCSE O Level Physics 5054. Today we will start with the first topic which is physical quantities, units and measurements. So the first terminology comes about what is physical quantity. There are two terms in it, physical and quantity. So physical comes from the word anything that you can see, touch feel and quantity is something that can be measured so when we talk about physical quantity we talk about all those quantities that can be measured consisting of a numerical magnitude and a unit okay a numerical magnitude means any number value that will show us what the physical quantity is and the unit denotes what physical quantity is being expressed for example if you take the most simplest one length length gives us the distance between two points if you take the distance suppose it's just an example from Clifton to Gulshan and Johar is 25 kilometers so when you look over here 25 is your magnitude and kilometer is your unit right next if you take the example of time Time measures intervals or measurements of periods. So if you take the example of one class, normally in schools, you have a 45 minutes class. So 45 is your numerical magnitude, whereas minutes is your unit. Then you take another example that is mass, which is measures the amount of matter in an object, right? So if you take, when you go to the groceries, if you're buying three kgs of rice or sugar, or ATA, whatever. So 3 is your numerical magnitude and kilograms is your unit. Similarly, if you look at the diagram, you're showing you a person or a car moving from so one point to the other, right? So the time is 1 hour 52 minutes. The R is your unit, minute is your unit. The 1 and 52 are your magnitude, okay? Now when we talk about physical quantity, it is divided into two parts. First is your base quantities. Okay. Yeah. So base is also sent as basic quantities. That means those ones that cannot be derived from any other physical quantities. And there are seven basic quantities. Which are shown in the table here. Okay, when you look at the table, there are seven base ones. You have length, mass, time, electric current, temperature, luminous intensity, and the amount of substance. Fine, the units are given as well as the symbols are given. So now when we talk in physics, the, um, the syllabus which we have, we will be mainly focusing on the first five. The other two are not discussed in detail because they are not part of your syllabus. Now you have your derived quantities. These are those that come from your base quantities or from other derived quantities. For example, if you look at this table here, the first simplest one is area. Okay, the relationship with the base quantity is length into length. If you find the area of a rectangle, it will be length into breadth or length into length if you take square. So the unit will be meter into meter, which is meter square. Because the SI unit for length is meters, so M into M gives you meter square. Similarly, if you look at density, density is mass upon volume, fine, and volume is obviously length into length into length. So the unit will be kg meter per cube, right? Similarly, if you look at these other examples and the last one, force. Force gives you mass into acceleration. Here, mass is a base quantity, whereas acceleration is another derived quantity. So the unit you get is as given here, kg meter per second square. But to make it easier, what happens, we have a SI unit for force, which is newtons. But if you write kg per meter second square, it's also not wrong. Right? Next, if you need to define a unit, like we say, it is a standardized size of measurement for physical quantities. Okay, the importance of units and importance of having a common unit system is turned out over the centuries. 
what happened was initially people used to use different forms of measurement they're using their feet they're using their hand okay so whatever was available according to that uh, things were measured but then what happened here was that it was not a uh, constant okay if you're measuring the length of cloth from your elbow to your finger everyone's length from the elbow to the finger is not exact so obviously the lengths were wrong so that was not fe feasible especially in terms of trade uh, in olden times trade was done not with money they used coins and they used the barter system where things were exchanged so there it caused a problem so there was a need to have a common system and today, all over the world, we have the international systems of units, which is used or known as the SI units. Okay, so the SI units are fixed units given for certain things. Like for example, one meter will be a certain length, right? That same distance will be used as one meter all over the world. Or one kg, the amount of mass will be used, the same amount will be used all over the world. Okay. So when we do SI units, we use certain prefixes like the table given here. This is used to make things easy for us in calculations because things that are really, really small, like certain measurements, like if you're finding the thickness or not thickness, if you're finding the length of a bacteria, it's really, really small. So instead of going into very small digits, we use the prefix. Similarly for large distances, like maybe the diameter of the earth, it's like millions, billions length in meters, right? So what you do is you use a prefix instead of putting so many zeros. If you take a few simple examples, like one centimeter is 0 0.01 meter, right? So if you have something that is a 10,000 centimeters, you can just write it as what? What you do is you convert one centimeter into 0 0.01 meters by multiplying with it. So 10,000 will become 1000 meters okay similarly for gigabytes gigabytes is what we use for our storage so one gigabyte is actually so many zeros if you look at it three three and three so nine zero so instead of writing such a big number what we do is just write one gigabyte or four five gigabyte and so on similarly for very small values like you look at this fourth example instead of writing like 0 0.000052 we convert it into this anyways by mistake i wrote the number twice but it's understandable okay anyways now we'll just do a brief discussion of scalar and vector quantities excuse me so Scalar and vector quantities, again, physical quantities are divided for also into scalar quantities and vector quantities, fine. A scalar quantity is a quantity that has magnitude and no direction. For example, you have distance, speed, mass, energy, time, and so on. But when you go to vector quantities, it's those quantities that have magnitude as well as direction. For example, displacement, velocity, weight, force pressure if you take this example for it there's a two point from a to b a person walks from point a to point b over this path the red dotted line fine and you reach part b the displacement will be from a to d so the distance is a scalar quantity because it will not tell which direction it is going in whether it's because it's a zigzag motion turning right turning left and so on but displacement is the straight distance from year to year and usually it is also mentioned with an arrow showing in which direction it is moving okay so distance is a scalar quantity and displacement is a vector quantity if we take another example that is of speed and velocity okay speed is a scalar quantity if you look at the car the car is traveling at a speed of 20 meter per second we just use the term 20 meters per second there is no direction method but if we need to find the velocity of the same car we will say it is moving at a speed of 20 meter per second east or west towards the right left whichever direction so velocity is a vector quantity because with the magnitude is also giving us the direction whereas speed is a scalar quantity because it is only giving us the magnitude <laughs>